Over 110,000 people confirmed dead in the Haiti earthquake. Americans, though, pledge more money to the aid effort during a star-studded telethon, raising cash to help those who survived. The United Kingdom raises its terror threat level to severe. The decision comes ahead of two international conferences in London on the security situations in Yemen and Afghanistan. And a new legal battle over Polanski's extradition to the United States. The film director is accused of having sex with a 13-year-old back in the 1970s. But the judge in Los Angeles refuses to sentence him in absentia. Hello, this is France Vancard International News. More than 110,000 people have been confirmed dead in the Haiti earthquake, making it the deadliest quake on record in the Americas. But the death toll could get much higher, with Haitian officials fearing it could surpass 200,000. Millions of people have been made homeless by the disaster. More than 600,000 people are currently living in temporary camps. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to our correspondent, Nathan King, who is in Port-au-Prince. I asked him if people were beginning to get out of the capital. The problem is, is that people are leaving the city in an ad hoc way, but they're also coming in. You know, as this city comes back to life, it needs commerce. We have seen lots of supplies coming in, not aid convoys necessarily, but uh, trucks load of bananas, uh, trucks load uh, of uh, mechanical uh, engineering, car parts, that sort of thing, coming in to fill the gap that has been left, the demand for people that still have money. Now, it needs some sort of coordinated response, but you really have to be on the streets of Port-au-Prince to realise a coordinated response uh, is almost impossible. Uh, getting people together getting them uh, bust out uh, and clearing neighbourhoods will require an immense plan. And we've seen a lot of toing and froing from the Prime Minister's office, people with, uh, with uh, blueprints rolled under their arm. Uh, this will take time. Uh, but people who have lost a lot uh, and, and cannot fend for themselves are generally uh, uh, getting on buses and heading to any relative they have uh, out in the province if they can't fend for themselves or in one of these camps. And Nathan, just very briefly, what can you tell us about the aid situation? You know, it's patchy. Some corners you will see water tanks and UN vehicles, and it all looks very efficient. And then other times, just on the street, people will come up and say, where is the aid? Uh, where is it coming from? Uh, we're out of money, a uh, money wiring service today, and people are desperate to get money from relatives abroad because they haven't had uh, any aid. They say that's the sort of thing uh, that they can count on, money from relatives. They can't necessarily count on the agencies. We also heard reports, though I can't substantiate it, but I've heard from many people... Uh, that some of the aid is being resold uh, on the streets. Uh, what we do see is that there are not a lot of aid agency presence on the streets at the moment. Celebrities are using their star power to fundraise for Haitian relief efforts in the Hope for Haiti Telethon, which hopes to raise millions in aid. Some of the biggest television, film and music stars have come together with a common goal raise money for Haiti's earthquake survivors. The Haitian people need our help. They need to know that they're not alone. They need to know that we still care. Tonight, we've assembled more than 100 actors and artists from the film and television and music industry who are here to take your call. That George Clooney hosted the event from Los Angeles, but stars also took to the stage in New York and London. Others were simply happy to answer phones and take donations. Well, listen, thank you so much, Reverend, for what you've done. Well, thank you for answering calls and making people's days in this way. Okay. <laughs> take well, care. Have a good weekend. But it's so hard. All of the donations will go towards the relief efforts in Haiti. Organizations include UNICEF, the Red Cross, but also the Clinton-Bush Haiti Fund. Before the earthquake, I really believe Haiti finally had the chance to build a stronger, more secure, more modern nation worthy of its people. What I want you to know tonight is that despite this tragedy, I still believe they have that chance. All four major U.S. networks, as well as many websites, broadcast the event live. It was the most widely distributed telethon in history. 
A focus for many Haitians is now getting their hands on money to buy goods and get back to whatever can be called a normal life. As a few banks in the capital, Port-au-Prince, now open their doors, locals queue for the only aid they say they can count on. And that's money from friends and relatives abroad. It's not food, it's not water, it's money that's the rarest commodity here. Even before the earthquake, Haitians depended on cash sent from family abroad. Now, even more so. Here, they start lining up at five in the morning to collect their money. Not everyone will get in today. Some have been coming for three days. But they need their money now. Tomorrow's line may be even longer. Anderson Lenguois was among the first to arrive today. He's an English teacher whose school lies in ruins. Now jobless, he depends on his brother's cheque from Connecticut. No money, no money at all, no. My house is smashed, can't get in to get anything out, can't retrieve nothing, no. And it's a tragedy here for the majority of people, but the house is smashed. Without help from other people, they can't live. He's number 94 and won't get in today. But rather than chasing aid around this city, a check from family is something you can count on. He'll be back tomorrow. Organizations that's supposed to have here, you can't get through, you can't, you don't know who they are. Things that are given free is being sold. Today, there are a lucky few. But even once the aid effort is over, Haitians will need this lifeline for months and years to come. Britain has raised the country's threat level from substantial to severe. It's the fourth highest level on a scale of one to five, but it's been stressed that the decision has not been taken in reaction to any new threat. Going in and out of the UK just got more difficult. The terror level was raised to severe on Friday, meaning tighter overall security, but especially in airports. The Joint Terrorism Analysis Centre made the decision. The Interior Minister explains. The fact is, as I say, we keep this under review. Moving to this different threat level says, yes, we have to be more alert, and it means that an attack has now moved to the level of being likely... It, we have absolutely no intelligence to suggest that it's imminent. Johnson, however, refused to answer whether this raised level is in any way linked to the failed Christmas bomb in Detroit. This intensified security comes five days before an international meeting on Yemen and its links to al-Qaeda. The Middle Eastern country is increasingly becoming a launch pad for global attacks, like the recent failed U.S. bomber. But in Britain, this heightened alert is less the exception than the rule. Over the past two and a half years, two were spent with a severe threat warning. So whether abroad or at home, readiness is the rule. A Los Angeles judge has refused to sentence Roman Polanski in absentia. The famous film director is accused of having sex with a 13-year-old girl in the 1970s and has been under house arrest in Switzerland for over a month. This latest decision is setting the stage for a renewed legal battle over Polanski's extradition to the United States. Well, France Lancaster's Gallagher Fennec is standing by in Los Angeles for us now. How involved is the victim in this case, Gallagher? Well, you know, first of all, the decision by the L.A. judge who declined to uh, judge Polanski in absentia really came as uh, no surprise. The uh, district attorney has really been pushing hard for Polanski to be brought back to the state's uh, for sentence. And what was new, however, as you mentioned, was uh, Samantha Geimer's illegal involvement at this point uh, in the case. And uh, this uh, Friday, she uh, literally legally attacked the Los Angeles district attorney, and yet another one of her attempts to have this case be dropped. She basically, through her lawyer in Los Angeles, was claiming that she was never consulted concerning the extradition procedure, which constitutes a violation of her rights as a victim under California law. But the district attorney formally denied. He claims that he tried to organize a meeting with her and her lawyers uh, concerning this matter, but that they never answered his request. And that argument right there is what allowed the judge to hand down his decision. Polanski has to come back to the United States to face sentencing. And Gallagher, very briefly, can you just tell us what happens next? How long will this drag out? Well, first of all, the judge's decision is subject to confirmation, and then the Swiss 
the Americans will have to find an agreement under which Polanski uh, can be extradited to the United States. There's no saying how long it's going to take, weeks, if not months, according uh, to many. And then Polanski will have to uh, be sentenced out here in the United States. So uh, evidently, this is a, a lengthy process. Okay, Galev Gofenik, thank you very much indeed for joining us. That's you up to date here on Full Swank and more from us in 20 minutes. Do stay tuned.